Yeah, I didn't think that fit like a bluegill. I've been chasing fish and game since I was just a lad. Way down in Alabama, just following my dad. He taught me how to live, to love Jesus I call him and poor. the land. He's blind in one eye. Skin a cat and be an outdoors man. Yeah, from an early age, I've been You didn't learn, did you, buddy? I fished that little creek behind our old neighborhoods. When I early came in late. Just in time for Mama's dinner. Hey guys and gals, Bob Sutter here, your host and resident singer. Fisherman, thanks again for tuning in right here on Hook, Line, and Singer on YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing a little bass fishing in my kayak. Be sure to click that thumbs up button to like this video. Also, please subscribe to my channel and I welcome your comments here. Thanks so very much. <laughs> Some decent fish on here, barely hooked. Got one hook in him. Wacky rig bass. Small guy. There he is. Oh, we're finding all these little guys. Got to find some grandmas and some grandpas. I like a number two octopus hook. Hope y'all can see that all right. I'm using the O-ring. It's the one with the offsetting so that the hook lines up this way instead of that way. I don't know if it makes a difference. It's just my preference. Chatterbait bass. Another little guy. Black and blue chatterbait with a Z-Man trailer. Thanks for playing. Come back when you've grown a few pounds. Well, best bass of the day. Not a big one, but not tiny. Pretty. Thanks, fella. I'll take it. So... 
Let me try a fluke. There you go. It's called a bait fish. It's a zoom fluke bait fish color. Just got it on a swim bait hook. Screwed into the nose, no weight. Just kind of twitch it along. Flutter it. Mimics an injured minnow. So they say. Caught a ton of fish on it. Fluky bass. Good hit. Good hit. There's my first fluke bass of the day. Yeah. a little guy. <laughs> a mean little guy. Hit it just as soon as it hit the water. But over there on the edge. Something a little bigger than that, y'all. Hey, let me real quickly leave you with a little good word from the good word, the best word, the word of God. Kind of uh, piggyback on something we talked about the other day. We were in John chapter 3, starting in verse 17. You can look that up, go back and check that out. But today, this is from the book of Matthew chapter 10. And uh, something that's kind of hard uh, for people who uh, aren't regularly churched and that sort of thing, maybe, uh, to comprehend. But, you know, we live in a world today where people are crying, oh, they want peace, uh, this and that, and, and Christians are to just roll over uh, like the Amish, maybe, and just let people take advantage of them and abuse them and trample the Word of God, that sort of thing. That's... That's hard to find in the Bible, but here's something that is in the Bible uh, that is uh, particularly interesting uh, to me and, and something I think we need to all remember. In Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 34, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Wow. For I have come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Does that mean Jesus came just to start trouble? No. It means that Jesus came to the earth so that all might be saved. And even if your own family is hindering your relationship with the Lord, then you should not put them above God. 
The next verse, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That's tough stuff right there. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Uh, Christians have, have long held uh, that in life, it's God first, God first, family second, and then work and everything else that we do and or enjoy is a distant third. But even family is a distant second. God is number one, always. He must be number one in your life. You stand for what is right. You stand for the word of God, even if it means trouble with your family. That's basically what these verses are saying. A lot of times that's hard to do, but I can promise you in the end, if God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody, including even blood relatives. Appreciate y'all listening to this. That's a good bass. Nah, not good as I thought. <sighs> I would say for the day, this crankbait has been the best producer today. It's a Berkeley Fritz side. I think I'm finally learning not to jerk, jerk, jerk my uh, hook set with a crankbait. My son actually taught me that. He said, because uh, I miss so many fish with a crankbait for some reason. Well, and he says, because I just need to lean into it and give it a steady pull instead of just jerk like I'd be trying to set a hook on a worm or something like that or using a worm. So far, so good today. I haven't lost a fish yet. Uh, I don't have any wood to knock on. It's about time for the biggest one of the day to come off. <laughs> it's a hard habit to break. Even, even when I'm brim fishing and crappie fishing, I tend to just boom. Oh, I did that and had a fish on. <laughs> Pretty good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't believe I could repeat that in a hundred years. I was trying to show y'all how I would normally set my hook and made the motion, and lo and behold, hooked fish. Pretty decent bass. Still not what we're after. We haven't gone home yet. Things are heating up around here. Just in time for mom's dinner. Well, I guess you might say I fell a line singer. Well, folks, it's been a good day. Good to be back in the saddle. Back in the kayak. Oh, sure was a beautiful day. Fish bit pretty good. Could get a decent size. You can't do anything about that. Just glad to be able to get out of here. Thank you. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. May the good Lord bless you wherever you are. Know that God loves you, and so do I. And until next time, I will catch you later. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.